By the late 1950s, lightweight, coach-built Grand Touring cars had really gained in popularity, thanks mainly to their versatility. Usable, comfortable, and attractive as everyday cars, they could be genuinely competitive when campaigned by their gentleman driver owners at the weekends. Few cars personified the spirit of the Grand Touring category better than this, the DB4 GT Zagato. Astonishingly designed by a 23-year-old Ecole Spada, it was launched in 1960 at the London Motor Show. And Aston Martin teased their customers by pronouncing a limited run of just 25 examples, each ferociously priced. Marketed initially as racing cars for the road, they did exactly what they said on the tin. And these cars were campaigned in the opening chapters of the 1960s by superstars such as Sterling Moss, Jim Clark, Roy Salvadori, and Innes Island. Chief among those events was the annual Royal Automobile Club Tourist Trophy held right here at Goodwood. The Zagata never quite had the legs to win it, but it did achieve a podium in 1961. This is chassis 0181, the third car off that original production line back in early 1961. It's one of only seven left-hand drive cars, and it's particularly special because this was the Zagato family's own car built specifically for Dr. Elio Zagato, the first-born son of Ugo, the company's founder. It was specced primarily with racing in mind. Elio, you see, was a very capable wheelman, and he loved nothing more than to go off to local hill climbs and rallies at the weekends. And he wanted his own DB4 GT Zagato specifically for that purpose. Very smooth power delivery with a lovely feeling of torque right from the lower revs. You don't get the feeling that you need to really rev it out. Just grab the higher cog and let the torque do the work. the car feels in the mid corner once it's taken a little set it's very poised very balanced and in these long fast flowing corners at Goodwood you can well understand how it would enjoy a nice long drift balanced ever so delicately on the throttle and although the car is heavier than the 250 GTO and the lightweight Jaguar E-types, which would have formed its competition back in the early 60s. It did have a good engine. That front-mounted straight six pumping out about 314 brake horsepower in its original 3.7 litre specification. That fared well against Ferrari's 300 or so horsepower from the GTO. It's not a huge advantage, but it was just enough to keep Aston Martin in the hunt. not lost on me how privileged I am to be driving one of the true original Zagatos. Oh, it's special beyond words. Okay, let's dig a little bit deeper into these cars now. I'm sat with the one man who quite literally wrote the books on the DB4 GT and the Zagato, Stephen Archer. Steve, what makes these cars so special? It's an incredible story of a car that's emerged from its own shadow. The DB4 only took a few years to develop, and it's a completely new car, platform chassis, uh, car springs all around, discs all around, new engine, new everything, touring yep. body, a completely revolutionary car. In its day, in October 58, it was an absolute world beater. It was the pinnacle. This is three years before the U-Type. Yep. Ferrari's cars in 58 were Pretty ordinary, yeah. extraordinary machine. But even in 58, John Wyatt and David Brown said, we need to make this into a racing car. This has got the pedigree. The chassis has got the ingredients to be a racing car. Yeah. 
and before the G GT4 was announced, they decided on the GT. Mm -hmm. So that development period for the GT4 GT was going on at the same time. Okay. But when they announced the car, the GT4 GT, in October 1959, London Motor Show, and it then toured Europe, they were getting their attention that they wanted mm -hmm. as a maker of not just Gran Turismo cars that he before, but as gentlemen's racing cars as well, which is what the GT was intended to be. The GT being five inches shorter, two seats, a lot lighter, twin plug head, triple webbers, yep. a lot more car than the DB4. Yep. At the October 59 London Motor Show, Tony Crook, who was representing the Zagato body of Bristol, introduced Zagato to John Wire. That sowed the seed. A little later on, Carlo Andalonia Touring was asked by John Wire, can you make a DB4 GT even lighter for us? And he said, no. But actually, Zagato could. There's a word to describe a Zagato body, it's spare. And by that we mean there is nothing superfluous on it. Okay. Either in its design, its construction, its features, or its materials. It is stripped back to the minimum. In fact, Setrite, the great automotive writer described it as like a matador, yep. a skin pulled over an animal tight. Yep. Steve, this was the Zagato family's own Zagato. What is it about this particular car that sets it apart from the other 19? You know, when you say to me, this is Dr. Zagato Zagato, I get a bit of a tingle down my spine. <laughs> no, really, it really, this is just extraordinary. Being with this car, knowing the history and knowing that Elio sat in there and competed with it, having been the mastermind behind the car. And its originality is, is just breathtaking. But you know, the headlamp covers have still got the Zagato stamping on. Yeah. This car is astonishingly original. The, the, the grille is still held in by the, by the knurled nut. But most people use self-tappers, which is ghastly. And it's just correct, and it's got the correct domed spinners on right. here, and the correct style of interior trim, and it's got the right canvas strap holding the spare wheel on. It's just so right. And it's still got the telescopic dampers at the rear that Elio specified in 1961. One of the three cars in title to have that in period. It's just right. What's so interesting about this car is that although it didn't quite achieve the success that it so deserved in period, it's gone on to more than make up for that later in its life, having become one of the most significant and important GT cars of all time. More rare than a Ferrari 250 short wheelbase, a 250 GTO, an Alpha 8C, a McLaren F1. This harmonious blend of British engineering with Italian flair and artistry rightfully sits among the finest classic car collections in the world. <laughs>